Back in the 1950s, the typical Teochew way of cooking would be to steam or stir fry mud crabs with julienne ginger, and this was the usual way Madame Che Yem Tian cooked. Where they lived along Sungai Bedok had plenty of mud crabs, and her husband Mr Lim Chun Ni would often catch them for family meals. But one day, Mr Lim got bored of the usual methods and asked Madame Cher to cook something different. This started with adding tomato ketchup, then adding some chilies, and after many adjustments finally became not the chili crab we know today, but the chili crab we can find at Roland Restaurant. The original recipe by Madame Cher is still used in Roland Restaurant, but just comparing pictures, you see that it lacks the yellowish egg strands in the sauce. The chili crab we most commonly find today, with egg strands and is made with sambal, are based off Chef Pui Kok Wai's recipe made in the 1960s. Up to this point, that is the most common origin story extensively covered by news outlets and bloggers. But that isn't the entire story of chili crab, which is a little bit more complicated than simply asking who is credited as the inventor of the dish. To understand what I mean, here is a recipe for chili crab sauce. First, we're going to make a sambal. Toast 1 teaspoon of belachan and 1 teaspoon of dried shrimps. And when you can smell the belachan getting toasted, take them out and blend. Then add 1 teaspoon of fermented soya beans or taojiu and these ingredients. Add some water if needed and blend until it's a smooth paste. Fry these in a pot with some oil. When it starts to dry up, add enough water to form a watery sauce. It would be better to use fish stock or crab stock. It doesn't matter if you add more as you reduce it down. Then add 4 tablespoons of tomato ketchup and 4 tablespoons of water chili sauce. Mix this all together until it's a thick consistency. You need to adjust the consistency by adding or boiling off the water, or use a cornstarch slurry at the end as needed. Since I didn't cook the crab in the sauce, or use the stock, my sauce was lacking a little extra something so I added a splash of Worcestershire sauce. When the sauce is adjusted to taste, beat up an egg and drizzle it into the sauce while stirring. And we have chili crab sauce. These are the ingredients we have used. Notice anything unusual thus far? Well, let me explain. Tomato ketchup itself isn't exactly a Chinese ingredient, as is the Worcestershire, which found its way into Asian pantries at the same time. Rather than saying someone invented chili crab, it is perhaps more accurate to say that ketchup was the trigger that catalyzed cooks around the world to experiment, which then resulted in chili crabs. To illustrate my point, the Indonesian dish kept eating sauce padang, otherwise known as crab in padang sauce, or if you want to call it another way, padang chili crab is extremely similar to Singapore's chili crab. It uses a mix of ketchup, chili sauce and is also popularly cooked using mud crabs, with the main difference being generally spicy and including other ingredients like candle nuts. On a glance, it is quick and easy to say that Padang copied Singapore, and maybe they did, who knows. Padang's culinary history is not well documented like Singapore's, or at least I don't know enough Indonesian to dig deep enough. Either way, it's not like someone in Singapore combining ingredients together somehow prevents someone else in Padang from doing so. More than likely, the similarities come from them both having crabs and chilies as native ingredients, then subsequently, the introduction of ketchup catalyzed some form of chili crab recipe. Relying on an anecdote in this blog post, two doctors who studied at the National University of Singapore back in the 1950s, when it was still called the University of Malaya, recalled that chili crabs were very popular in Port Klang as well, though there wasn't a specific form of chili crab and it was prepared differently throughout Malaysia. The ketchup theory would be even clearer by looking at the timeline of ketchup in Singapore. Although American and European ketchup was already found in early 20th century Singapore, they were too expensive at 40 cents a bottle when the salary of an apprentice clerk was $10 a month. Proportionally speaking, today that would be like $120 for a bottle of ketchup given a salary of $3,000 per month. By the 1930s, Hong Kong and Shanghai branded ketchup can be found for 15 cents a bottle, which is much cheaper than what Heinz would cost. And after World War II, ketchup started becoming more popular as it became more affordable, with the Nanyang Xiang Tao beginning to publish ketchup recipes such as ketchup prawns and ketchup chicken meatballs by the 1950s. 1950s, which is also the same decade that chili crab, which is made with ketchup, started. But it isn't quite as simple as ketchup becoming cheaper. If you had Asian grandparents and cooked pasta or bread for them, they might take a bite or two and ask for white rice. Tastes don't change quite that easily. In the case of ketchup, its sweet and sour flavours were similar to the classic sweet and sour flavours of Cantonese cuisine, which is usually achieved using vinegar and sugar. To some chefs, ketchup was even an improvement over the traditional flavours due to its umami component. By the 1950s, Chef Hui Kok Wai observed that the Cantonese in Singapore had grown to favour more native flavours as compared to the Cantonese in Hong Kong and Guangzhou. At Post Market, back then a Cantonese enclave, 
They were dipping steamed crab into garlic chilli sauces and hawkers were already serving up stir-fried crab with ketchup. And it is behind this context that in 1963, Chef Hui created his version of chilli crab, with a local sambal created with chilies, garlic, shallots, dried shrimps and belacan. The sweet and sour ketchup was added to balance out the spiciness, and then finished with the classic Cantonese technique of drizzling an egg, called wat tan or hua tan. With Hui Kok Wai being one of the four heavenly kings of Chinese cooking back then, it is perhaps not surprising that other restaurants would emulate his version to become the common chilli crab we know nowadays. And in a nutshell, that is the more complete story of chilli crab. It isn't simply just that someone happened to think of and invent it on the spot, but something brought about by changing tastes and preferences and the growing availability of ingredients. If you enjoyed this section, I highly recommend Cheryl Ng's blog post on ketchup and chilli crab, as all this information was gotten there. And now, let's have a taste of Burger King's chilli crab burger, which reminded me to make this video. And it's made with salmon. Eh? Uncle, give me chicken rice, change chicken to duck. The salmon is quite dry and there's not enough sauce, though the sauce itself is not bad. Likely to be one of those ready-made chilli crab sauces you can buy. Still, I feel like I wasted 10 bucks. Is there even any point for me to buy this in the first place? Wasting money aside, let's make a manto bun. Mix yeast in 90 grams of water and let it sit for a few minutes. Then to 200 grams of bread flour, add in 1 and 1 third tablespoons of sugar, mix it all together and add in the yeast water. Simply mix this all together, adding more water as needed until it comes together as a dough. Oops, mine needs a little bit more flour. Let it sit for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, roll it out in a well flat surface, squeezing out all the air. Then fold it in and roll it out again. Do this for 6 times or until you're lazy. Then roll the sheet of dough into a log shape. Divide it into 4 pieces and pinch it together so it looks like a burger bun. Place them on parchment paper, put them in a steamer and let proof for another 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, turn on the burner and steam them for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, turn off the burner and let the bun sit for another 5 minutes. Looks like my technique in rolling the dough wasn't good as the surface wasn't smooth, but eh, it would be fine. Heat up enough oil to cover the buns halfway and when the bubbles like this are visible, Throw in the buns to fry them. Simply flip until all sides are golden brown. There, nobody will know that my mantos weren't perfect. For the crab burgers, I'm using frozen crab, which is the reason why I don't have crab stock. Give it some salt, breadcrumbs, and egg and mix it all together. Add more breadcrumbs as needed for the mixture to be able to form a patty. Then, heat up a little oil in a pan and put the patties in. Oops, little came out. It's okay, just scoop it back in. After about 5 minutes, when it's well browned, it'll stick together again. Once both sides are done, the very basic crab cakes are done and you're ready to assemble. In case you skipped ahead, the sauce recipe is at the front of the video. And we have a less messy version of Singapore's national dish, chilli crab. You still dirty your hands when you think this though. By the way, maybe it's because I'm just a poor boy, but am I the only Singaporean who feels weird calling chili crab our national dish when I've probably eaten a dish less than 5 times in my lifetime? Crab is expensive, and if you'd like to bring that number up a little bit, maybe consider gently clicking the like and subscribe button. Or if you're feeling generous for Chinese New Year, directly supporting the channel by buying me a kopi at Kofi.